Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini-episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career double-shot K-Cup with my guest, Justin Welsh. Let's talk about what is actually involved in selling SaaS, which is what you did at ZocDoc and at Patient Pop. And I love the names. In both instances, you were a sub 10 employee. In other words, you were among the first employees in the door. Can you break down the industry for us, Justin, and in particular, the side of the house that you occupied in sales? What makes a great SaaS salesperson? And is it different selling software as a service than selling in other industries? And if so, why? Yeah, I think it's different only because there's an education piece in the market. And so what I mean by that, I'll explain that, Andrea, is you used to buy big pieces of hardware, like I talked about, that got installed and the company paid $50,000 for a piece of software on premise, on site. And now we have a subscription model where it's in the cloud and you can subscribe to the software, which is actually beneficial for customers. And I think customers aren't used to spending their money for software in a subscription basis and like a subscription uh, payment formation. So there's just simply education to be given to our customers to tell them why we charge a subscription, why it's priced that way. I think if you can do that, it's not that dissimilar from selling other products. And I think selling as a skill is relatively consistent across different types of sales companies. So I'll give you an example of some of the things that you have to be able to do really well to be successful in sales. The first thing that you have to do is you have to actually understand your prospects challenges. So often young salespeople, the very first thing they do, Andrea, is they tell a prospect all about their software. They tell them all the features, and we call that feature dumping, where you're just telling people all the features without really understanding their problem. And sales is about problem solving. So the best salespeople I know ask the most questions, go deeper, learn more, ask why. And by the time they're done with the first 30 minutes to 60 minutes of a conversation with a prospect, they can confidently say, I understand your business challenges. Once you understand a prospect's business challenges, the next step is to attach your software as the solution to their problems. So if you can map your software's features and benefits back to their problems, you're now showing them how by working together, you can solve their problem. So you've probably heard the saying, always be closing. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's always be understanding your customer's challenges. Mm, I love that. Another saying that you've shared, I heard it in a talk you gave in June 2020, was a mantra at the companies that you worked at, at Patient Pop and ZocDoc, they're kind of tongue twisters, and it was growth at all costs. What did that mean? Yeah, that was an old mantra. And that's so let me walk you through sort of how things have changed based on the environment. And I think a lot of your listeners will know this just from the news. So it used to be that what was really important was what we would call top line growth. So growing your revenue, right, as fast as you can, so you can get more funding, so you can continue growing, so shareholders could see returns, so on and so forth. And then you probably remember a time a few years ago or maybe 18 months ago when the company WeWork was in the news a lot. And one of the things that WeWork was in the news for was their business model had a lot of holes in it. 
They were burning a lot of money. They were hemorrhaging a lot of cash. And it was a faulty IPO. It didn't work. It never happened. And investors started questioning growing at all costs. And instead, they started to think about growing efficiently, growing profitably, and growing for the long-term sustained success. And so with WeWork and many other similar companies in the market going through turbulent times, that growth at all costs mentality has left the startup ecosystem. It's left Silicon Valley. I'm sure there are still some companies operating under that mantra. But today, if I were building a business from scratch, I would want to build a profitable, efficient business. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.